This podcast is a proud member of the Unidentified Network. So now, ladies and gentlemen, live and in color, it's Mr. Wayne Love Juice. The other day I produced a movie Had a cat with an interesting copy We said that the YouTube algorithm Really act like happy If a channel on the broadcast once a week So we decided we could text ya Whatever we've got A piece of news in our new book On the track extra Good evening ladies and gents and welcome to another episode of On The Track Extra. My name's John Downs, I'm the director of the Centre for Fortean Zoology and every Wednesday evening at 6.30 and every Saturday afternoon at 3 we bring you a mixture, a melange, a... Lauren, what begins with M? Marmite, of course. Thanks for that, Lauren. I can work with that. And it seems quite appropriate because Marmite is one of the things in British parlance that you either love or you hate. And the same can probably be said about this show. You either understand where we're coming from with our mixture of science and red sick. <laughs> the reality. And do you know what surreality is, young Master Muhammad? Well, I want to say seaweed. <laughs> Or you just don't get us at all. We're going to get to our guest interview any minute. But I have to warn you that throughout the interview you'll hear weird clanking sounds. And this is because Archie, God bless him, has managed to nibble the side of his rump until it was raw, which is something he has a habit of doing, especially in hot weather. So he is having to wear the big plastic cone of shame. But now all that's explained, over to Dave Scott in Canada. So, Dave, what's the latest? Well, my two-week expedition into this area is it's now entering week eight. <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the course for crypto. Well, it's actually, to the same it's like, it would actually be great if I had more help around here. But the guy I was trying to recruit, and I was going to give him a couple of the spots, uh, went ballistic on my Facebook last night and said I wasn't, I was trying to steal his areas by ghosting him. I just kind of went, no, that's not the case. You better go look at your messages. And so he's obviously got some issues. So bye-bye. I, I have enough people with issues around me. Yeah, you know, I, can't, world. I can't face any more bloody drama. It's not. I, 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 I have this much tolerance for drama nowadays. Like, he. He's a nice guy. He goes out with his kid and everything, and they do some interesting hiking, but it's everything is, oh, it's a Sasquatch. It's a Wendigo. It's a Skinwalker. And I'm thinking, no. And he's, oh, no. <laughs> I just couldn't handle him. So when he went off, I went, okay, there's my excuse to dump you. Because he was, I, Robin and I were going to take him out. We were going to explore the, the whole 22 miles together. We are going to break into three groups and, and go and get this whole thing done right down, back down to the Elgin Trail, and then go down to Lake Erie. But So it'll look like it'll be just Robin and I in August. Speaking of August, I am going to Nova Scotia at the end. I'm going to try to catch the uh, pilot whales. I think it's, no, sperm whales that come into the St. Lawrence. I'll be driving along the St. Lawrence for about four hours, like right along the shoreline on, on the trip. Carol's going to grad school in Nova Scotia, so I'm driving her down. Um, so I'm going to try to get some whale pictures too. Oh, that's that's really yeah. far out. Well, yeah. I think what we ought to do before we go any further is, okay. if any of you out there are watching this and live in Canada and want to get more involved, contact this man. Dave Scott Please. is the CSZ Canada Generalissimo. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Robin and I, Robin's trying to cover Eastern Ontario for me right now, but we've got three sites down there right now that need investigating and got five of them here. So not seven sites. I've got eight sites that need, and I, I'm, I'm kind of stuck here. It's just every time I think it's gotten quiet, no, something happens. So I'm not, I'm not giving up. It's getting really hard with the, uh, with the rain to get into the areas with the tracks because they're in Canada, we're not allowed on the tracks. It gets a lot of $560 fine if we're caught up there. So I'm trying to find ways to get back to the area without trespassing on CN land. And it's just kind of like, ah, so I've been doing a lot of satellite scanning and that, but we did have some excitement here. I think it was Tuesday night last week. I was sitting here and mind my own business and uh, the parts truck was in dropping off some parts. So I was sitting back here to, uh, cause we had to coat the area open. So I was making sure nobody else came in behind him. And right over in this area here, it sounded like a bull elephant going through there. Now <laughs> I talked to Robin about this and she said, well, what were you doing? Well, early in the evening, I, I always come in and do a, few whoops over the course of the first couple hours just to see if there's anything will answer me and, and you know i bang a couple of trees and tried you know wood knocks i don't think wood knocks work to tell you the truth but i'm i'm at that point i'll try anything to try to get them out if i can get them out in this grassy area here i can get some pictures you know we could get some good quality pictures of them. and uh I, I don't know. It, it it did. It actually scared me because I've never heard anything like that. I've been near bears going through the woods and this was bigger than a bear by the sounds of it. Maybe the only thing I could think of that might have went through is a buck with a big rock on him. But we don't usually see big bucks in here. We usually only see does and fawns and they still haven't shown back up. Last night I was working and right on top, that's the restaurant there. Up on top was my buddy. He was up there going who, and I was going to Dave, and he was going who. <laughs> He's got a memory like a like a sieve. He doesn't remember me from time to time. So that was that was kind of a treat to have him back. But he was way way up top. It's a three story building, and he was on the very very top. He's usually out back, just on top of the trees where I was showing you that tall where I was trying to get into. Because usually I can walk in there and then walk down. And there's a tunnel over there that goes underneath. It's full of water right now. So I was trying to go through this way this morning, just before you called, when I was talking to you. And it's just so overgrown. And I've got no bug repellent with me because I'm at work. I didn't bring my kit with me because I don't have my Jeep here. <clears throat> my daughter has it. <laughs> and... Uh, so I just went, I'm not going to get eaten alive because as you see my arms, I, I get enough bites, you know, without sacrificing myself like that. So I'll, I'll get in tomorrow with Carol. Carol and I will go in. We'll bring the Actel. You know, uh, the three whoops, all three whoops were accompanied by noise, two from trains and one from the <laughs> air brakes. So. Oh, air conditioning. I love air conditioning. Here, I'll put the window up too. Turn that right up. That's a big train. But can you see how close he is? Can you see him through the trees? Very much so. Yeah. And see, it's somewhere in that, between that train and that tree line is where he's going through. Now, I, uh, I sent out a couple of messages and Robin seems to think I've got him for the summer. He's going to be here all summer. He's decided this is a good spot. And that's why he keeps popping up on me. But he's got, he might be used to, we're here every night. There's somebody here. So he may just know this fan's here and just, well, I'm not going to acknowledge it. So I'm going to have to get really creative, I think, to draw him out and get some sound out of him. But I did, uh, I ordered a, a cone for my microphone. Uh, noise gatherer mm -hmm. and I'm going to put it out the next time I work which is if I have it by Wednesday I ordered it off Amazon so as long as it's here by Wednesday I'll put it out and see if we can get any sound of them moving around in there at night 
Um, what else is there? Have we got any cameras out in that area at the moment? I've got one camera. I've got my one camera, but it's it's not that far in. It, it's not in very far at all because I just couldn't get in there with what I was wearing the other day when I put it out. So I didn't have my, uh, remember I showed you my legs were bare and, and I had my shoes. I put it up the day I sent you the pictures of the tracks because I had two cameras with me. The other one I was going to put over there because that's where I heard the third whoop was over in that area. So I, I, I'm pretty sure he's coming down the tracks. He's using the tracks for transport, and this is as far as he's going. But if you look on the map, we're, this is the north side of the lot where we are here. Mm -hmm. This is the north side. Uh, if you look to the west, which is out behind me right now, you'll see these two huge fields and wet areas and wetlands. That's where that sound came from, right where the tracks split. And it was loud because I was parked in my regular spot here, which is where the, the T-junction up just ahead of me here. And I heard him from way over there. So it was a loud one. He was letting somebody know. Now, I don't know if I, uh, Robin seems to think I agitated him the other night. That's why he was having a little bit of a hissy fit out there. And if that's the case, I'm going to agitate him one more time. I, I really don't like to do that because I don't want him to leave, but I want to record him in there. Like, even if it's just him, if I just catch the trees being pushed over. Now, there was a tree I did find just near the entrance that was down, but it was from the water. We had so much rain here, and I think the roots just didn't have enough to grab onto because it would turn to liquefied mud, and it fell over. There was no... Uh, what do you call that? It didn't look like it was pushed on purpose. It just looked like a natural fall. So, and I don't think that was it because that was more over that way. That way. Can you see my finger? Yep. So, where the tree was down. So, but the sound came from in here, out behind Squatch Five. So, six. That's six. That's my sixth Jeep, you know that, eh? <laughs> I don't like Jeeps. If, if you want a Jeep, buy from Oxford Dodge, sell them that Dave from the CFZ sent you, and they will make a monetary donation to us that we could use to uh, buy equipment for Canada. We can use it to send Richard on expeditions to Sumatra again, because I think he's really close, and I, I really like to get some of my cameras replaced here because my cameras are quite old. Yeah, but I, I'd really like to raise a lot of money this summer and I'll, I'll fill you in on this in a sec and then use the rest of it to donate to Richard's uh, expedition because I really think that's going to be a moneymaker for us. I did hear from Eric at the Ministry of Natural Resources. We are not, not, N-O-T, going to be allowed into the fire area this fall. He's not even allowed to go because he's not a senior enough officer. It's going to be fire crews up there till December, and that's it. Because they want to make... I think what the problem is, I don't know if you've seen how badly it's burning out west. Yeah, I've, see, I've seen some of the news stories. It's horrific. Those, those are being caused by ghost fire, or uh, what do they call those... Uh, when the fire burns underground over the winter and then spring back up when it dries up, that's what a lot of those are. Because the town of Jasper half of it burnt down yesterday, yesterday, the day before, which is one of the big tourist area in the Rocky Mountains ski resort. So yeah, I saw I saw it on the BBC News. Absolutely horrific. Yeah, it's it's catastrophic out in BC and uh Alberta right now. So so that's why they're not letting us in this fall. They said maybe next year we can go in with them, but they would really, they didn't say we couldn't go because it is crown land and we're allowed to because we're pretty, you know, we're, we're crown citizens. But they really strongly suggested that we would have zero support from them. And I kind of wanted to go in with them because they've got the trucks to go through it and that. So that way I don't have to use. Squatch to get back there, and Robin doesn't have to use her muddy dodge to get in there. So I need to see what's going on. 
because that crash really shook me. I don't know why, but it, it was so big and so loud. It actually scared me. And I thought I wouldn't get scared till I actually saw something eight feet tall standing in front of me. But that was a pretty horrific sound. You know, it's like the roof caving in on you. It's loudness type sound. I didn't think it would startle me like that because I'd come out from my, we, we used to go hiking up in the Northwoods of Brayside, which is down by my hometown. And we were coming out from underneath these juniper bushes one day. It was the tunnel that went out to this big open field. And we came out and there's two bear cubs right there, like 50 oh, wow. feet in front of us. We went back through those junipers really fast because mama bear was close. We knew that. And uh, I wasn't as scared then as that sound the other day. Because I think it dawned on me. I, I, I get really cocky here at night sometimes with them, you know, whooping at them and popping. And I think I got the fence when I'm working, right? Uh, I don't think that fence is going to stop them. It's not that big. And it's only chain link, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's a property fence. It's not a cement fence or anything. So one of these days I'm going to annoy him enough. I uh, been practicing popping, you know, that one where you cup your hands and you get that pop sound come out and about every 10th one I get one. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I, yeah. And I get a really good one every, about every 10th one. And the other day when I did it, I got it the first try and it was massively loud. So and I went, Ooh, I'm not going to mess with that. You know, I'm not going to mess with a good thing. And I think that might've been what kind of caught his piqued his curiosity. So now I don't know about you, but it's banana season here. You know, they're, they're shipping up all the bananas from Costa Rica and everything, but a lot of them are coming in and they've been too long on the shelf. So we're buying them like big bags of them for a dollar. So I've been buying them and feeding this field throwing them out there because they're cheap. Same as the strawberries I did a few weeks ago. You know, anytime I get cheap fruit like that, I'm going to start feeding this field out here because with the lack of animals we are getting, I'm a little worried he's going to leave before I get any concrete evidence because I need to get in there when it's a little drier and look for prints for one thing. And I really want to look for a hair sample. Uh, I bought uh, I bought a box of baggies and it's still sealed. It won't be open till I need it. And I've got my surgical gloves from when I had surgery. I, I borrowed a box <clears throat> from my doctor. <laughs> and uh, so I have them. So I want to try to get some hair samples out, out here and see what is crashing around here. If it comes back, it's a big deer. So be it. But I really don't think it is. I'm more convinced every day we've got a big hairy guy out here. Uh, coming to visit, saying, nah, Dave, I'm, I'm over here. Shine the light. And, of course, I got this huge, humongous flashlight now that I carry with me everywhere. And I haven't had to use it because I'm never close to the fence line when he's doing it. But I've started taking all my breaks just up from the end. Actually, I take it down at the end of this row. But I take all my breaks. I'll get out and have my coffee. I'll park the van down there. I do all my walking. So I'm along this fence line and, and along the back one, trying to stay in the area. And uh, hopefully in the next eight weeks, <laughs> we'll, we'll get, I'd like to get some at least semi-cohesive film. I don't want any paradormal or, you know, we, we, we've got so much of that. I, I can sit here at night and go, oh, look, I can see a Sasquatch I'm looking at. It's just the way the leaves are. You know, I know, I know the difference between paradormal and an animal in the woods. You know, I've been out in the woods long enough. I've been, you know, most of my life. But I'm a little frustrated because I'm not getting what I want. But if you really think about it, this is the first three whoops I've ever heard. So I, I, I've been rewarded. I'm blessed and I'm cursed. Does that make sense? <laughs> the more you get, the more you want. It's like money. Eh? You know, if I want a million dollars on a lottery draw, I'd want two. And yeah. if I got the two, I'd want, I'd want four, you know. <laughs> I think that's just human nature. Are the, are the animals? <laughs> Pollen count still really high. Uh, the owls are back. Your friend Steve the owl is back. Yeah, Steve the owl is back. Uh, the groundhog was out here the other day. We actually did see him. But he was up close to 
the fence here. He's usually back closer to the woods, but he seems to be spending more time. And I've only seen him the once. I did see one bunny, but it was a bunny. It was a new, you know, like a this year's batch uh, going across into our storage area. Um, I have not seen the skunks. The raccoons are not, not back. Uh, the nested pair that were out behind our uh, tire storage actually came in and checked their nests and left again the other day, but they only flew in, flew out. Uh, ben and Nettie, our regulars, have not come back. We have not seen them at all. Uh, birds are back. The birds are singing in the morning because before when the sun was coming up, I used to be able to hear the birds all the time. And then for a while, it was just dead quiet in the morning. It was like the sun's coming up and you're waiting for all the birds to start singing. Nothing. But I don't know if you heard it when we were out there earlier. You could actually hear the birds chirping and chiming out there again. So not back to the level it was, but it's starting to recover. They're, I think they're getting used to something being in there. And they realize, well, he can't get me. I'm up a tree. And they've settled down. Birds, birds are not as dumb as people think. Yeah, they got a little brain, but it's really dense. So not dense as dumb. It's dense like it's thick. It has a lot of uh, synapses. Is that what they're called? Synapses. Synapses. Yeah. So they're they're actually a lot smarter than people think. So I, I give the birds some credit. Uh, the eagle. Oh, uh, the hawks were back. I actually saw the hawk up on the fence here, and uh, he re he jumped down, got a mouse or something out of the grass, and took off. But he used to sit right there on top of that light post all the time, him and his mate. But I have not seen his mate, so I don't know what's going on with that. So whether he was just coming back in, Jack, but it's another carnivore. So he's, you know, Sasquatch is either maybe stepping on or eating the small rodents too. So depending what his diet is. Uh, with this corn coming up, I think we're good for another eight weeks of them because he's got lots to eat. There's a lot of edible plants back in there. Um, I'll, I'll try to get some video this week, some good quality video of uh, the plants and the, the shrubberies that are back in there, the berries. And then, the, of course, the corn, it's just starting to come up. It's like cow corn. I don't know what you guys call it out there. We, I call it wild corn because these are actually corn seeds that are blown in. They're not there is never corn planted here unless it was like a hundred years ago and it's coming up. So uh, other than that, if anybody has any ideas what I could do, or if they want to come out here and sit with me at night, I'll be more than happy to let you know what shift I'm on. You're, you're more than welcome to come and sit with me and maybe between two, two sets of heads and, you know, and if one is working at the same time, that gives us three CF setters. Um, looking for stuff and uh, I do recommend you wear a pair of pants that tie up at the bottom we've got a lot of ticks around here uh, or a pair of combat boots if you got them or a pair of uh, high top sneakers that you can lace really tight uh, definitely socks that'll go up over your pant leg you don't want anything getting up uh, I don't bring the dogs up here because of or the dog up here because of the ticks and uh, the one lady that works the earlier shift, evening shift, she stopped bringing her dog because she's found two ticks. And she doesn't take them out there where my dog would have to come with me because she would not sit still without making a racket if I went in there and she couldn't see me. So, um, yeah, any ideas anybody has, uh, I'm more than willing to listen to. Um, I'm working till, I think I'm filling in these shifts till the end of September. So I will be here to the end of September, 2024. And then I will be back <coughs> for another six weeks, uh, the second week of November until the second week of January. So we got winter. We can have winter squatch, I guess. Squatch, squatch meetings. So. Now I have worked here. I don't know if you haven't seen any of the other videos. I have worked here for five years and this is the first activity, activity I have ever had. And uh, before my surgery on my leg, and, and now again, I hardly spent any time in the vehicle except when it's hot like this on Sunday morning. Um, so I have the air conditioning. But usually I'm out walking around. 
and that's that's the first time and it's the first time i haven't had turkeys all over the lot we had wild turkeys galore last year and they like chrome so anytime they see chrome they see themselves and they get into a fight with themselves so we used to have to come in escort these stupid turkeys off the lot now turkeys are not smart they should see me coming and leave because i'm not nice to them. I, and I yell and scream at them till they leave. And, they'll, and they used to go back out into the area, my, my, what seems to be the hot spot here. And uh, so if the turkeys come back, I'm going to say he's gone. But I'm thinking he's settled in for the summer. He's found a spot with water, food, uh, food's growing. So I, I personally, if I was a wild man living in the forest, I would stay here. Um, you've got the restaurant right here and the two garbage cans that I've already shown you before, and they're open. They've got our garbage cans out there that they can reach across the fence and grab into. Mind you, most of it's automobile parts, but, you know, we also do uh, throw our kitchen waste in there. We do a lot of barbecues here. We do a lot of uh, fundraisers for people. And uh, so the food sources here are good. And then you got that Dumbass that works overnight throwing bananas and strawberries over the fence. You know, that's I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep them here as long as possible. Um, I was actually thinking you could you could talk, you, we can discuss this right now. This tree above that blue car. Yeah. I could get a camera down low and line it up through that fence. And I was actually thinking of putting another camera there. That way I've got this and I'll point it a little bit more this way and that'll cover that whole. Actually, let's go for a walk. I'm taking you for a walk, John. Sorry about the sun. If I could get the cameras to cover this whole area there, that's all I need to cover on this side. And if I could get in there this week, I'll try to put two cameras on the other side. Because this camera's been up for a while down here, and uh, the animals don't pay any mind anymore at all. So I'm hoping. Uh, Rob, Robin told me to let them climb it. Climbing? Climbing. Climbing. Yeah, right. to them. So, And then I've also got that little tree here. I could put another camera there, I guess. And the restaurant people are really good. They've heard stuff at night, too. I'm going to do an interview with. Uh, the night cook, because he brings out the garbage and he said he's been scared in at night and he's heard strange noises coming out of the woods. He doesn't, he thinks he thought it was kids. And I said, no, I think it's a bigger, it's bigger than kids, you know? So if this happened like three months from now, I think it was the dick wad I threw out <laughs> this morning. <laughs> I said, yeah, he knows where I am and he's just trying to cause trouble. But, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm not exhaustively, I'm just running out of ideas of how to get better, better, better evidence out of here. So, because I'm sure it's there. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are in Canada, please get in touch with Dave Scott because he's a very nice guy and he needs help desperately in this hunt for the Sasquatch, which is in the fields and woods behind the place where he works. So, what's the space? I will tell you how the investigation develops, and if you want to get involved with it more, contact me, Gwyn, or Dave. I'm going to be back on Saturday. What am I talking on Saturday? I've got no idea. I can't remember. But I'll be talking about something on Saturday. So... If you're there watching and I'm here doing what I do and Mr. McCrennan, are you there, Mr. McCrennan? Are you going to be watching? Because if you are watching and I'm doing the uh, live chats and stuff, I'll be seeing you.